This is 7 National News and in our top story. Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, headed the UA delegation to the 33rd meeting of the GCC Interior Ministers, which is currently being held over in Kuwait. Upon his arrival, His Highness Sheikh Saif was greeted by his counterpart, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior of Kuwait, and a number of other senior officials. During the meeting, the GCC Ministers of Interior discussed a number of topics related to enhancing security cooperation between the GCC countries, the Security Commission's recommendations, and other mutual issues. In his statement, His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed commended the efforts of his Kuwaiti counterpart and those exerted by the GCC countries to promote and develop cooperation across all areas in order to deliver more results that benefit the countries and people of the region. As the UA marks the one year anniversary of the country winning the bid to host the World Expo in Dubai in 2020, his Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, the Expo 2020 Dubai Higher Committee Chairman, President of the Department of Civil Aviation and Chairman and Chief Executive of Emirates Airline and Group, has officially led the UA delegation to the General Assembly of the Bureau of International Expositions, which is the governing body of the World Expo. His Highness Sheikh Ahmed was quoted as saying that connecting minds, creating the future, the Expo 2020 Dubai theme and its sub-themes, which are opportunity mobility and sustainability, will drive the content and provide the prism through which we can explore, connect and address local, regional and global challenges. Addressing the BIE's 168 member states in Paris, his Excellency Mohammed Ibrahim Al Shaibani, the Director General of the Rulers Court and Vice Chairman of the Expo 2020 Dubai Higher Committee, formally presented the UA's vision and update on developments for hosting the event, including highlighting core deliverables required for the mandatory registration phase, which is expected to be completed in November 2015. He stated that what is important over the next six years is that we create an environment that will stimulate demand generated across diverse sectors, directly and indirectly, and that we link this demand to the delivery, operation and service needs of the Expo. Similarly, we expect to actively seek to engage with the private sector and solicit their participation when we launch our procurement process for companies of various scales, from startups to SMEs to multinationals. His Excellency Al Shaibani also presented key milestones for 2015, centered around the work streams currently underway, an outward reaching engagement program, and the upcoming BIE deliverables, while the second half of 2015 will focus on Dubai's participation at the Expo Milan 2015. Ahmed Juma Al Zabi, the Deputy Minister of Presidential Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Committee of the Debt Settlement Fund, has announced that eight national banks have waived defaulted loans worth 1.144 billion dirhams belonging to 2,397 citizens. He said that the fund also announced that bad debts worth 400 million dirhams for 1,085 people have also been waived bringing the number of beneficiaries whose debts have been dropped to 3,482, adding that the total value of the waived amount touches 1.5 billion dirhams. The minister explained that the beneficiaries fall under the category committed to pay, in addition to social security cases, health disability or special needs, as well as a number of humanitarian cases. He revealed that the national banks which have waived the debts are Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank, First Gulf Bank, Mashrek, Union Bank, National Bank of Abu Dhabi, Emirates National Bank Dubai, Hilal Bank and the National Bank of Amal Quain. As a part of 43rd National Day celebrations, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the UAE's Foreign Minister, has launched a campaign titled Emirati Wherever I Am. 
The campaign is an invitation to all UA citizens living in the country or visiting abroad to post video clips of their celebrations on a dedicated website. The clips that should not exceed three minutes will be used in the production of a short film on the UA National Day celebrations around the world, which will be broadcast in December. The website includes detailed information on how to participate and also how to film the clips and contains guidelines that must be followed during filming. In a tweet, the UA Foreign Minister wrote, Brothers and sisters, wherever you are, please join us in celebrating the anniversary of the UA National Day. No matter how far away you are, you will always remain in our hearts. And we look forward to your contributions to mark these precious moments. And continuing with 43rd National Day celebrations, the Ministry of Interior has set guidelines for car decorations. Brigadier Gaith Hassan Al-Zabi, the Director General of the Traffic Coordination Department at the Ministry, was quoted as saying that car decoration laws have been set in such a way that allows people to celebrate without committing any traffic offences. Some of the rules include that drivers must not carry more than the permitted number of passengers for each car, and no one should stick their heads out of windows or sunroofs of vehicles. Motorists must not block traffic, modify engines, obscure number plates or use spray paint. Al-Zabi added that the ministry encourages the public to celebrate the event in a civilised manner without writing indecent comments and putting flags on vehicles in a place that poses a danger. Stickers should also be placed on the sides of vehicles and car windows tints must not exceed the 30% limit. Penalties for those who break the rules range between having their car impounded and 12 black points on their license, as well as fines of up to 3,000 dirhams. The legacy of Noor Ali Rashid, the celebrated father of photojournalism in the region, came into focus once more at the Art Talk series, organised by the Sharjah Museum's department on Wednesday night. The Director General of the Sharjah Museum's department, Manal Ataya, hosted an intimate gathering of art and photography enthusiasts, educators and professionals. They discussed Noor Ali Rashid's work that spanned six decades and produced millions of photographs, as well as the evolution of photojournalism in the region. His daughter, Shamsa Noor Ali Rashid, the guest curator of Lasting Impressions, and chairperson of the Noor Ali Rashid archives, said that her father was doing what he was passionate about until the very end. The result of his dedication, commitment and passion is a visual documentation of the UAE's leaders, its history and people, long before the country's union. At present, a collection of his photographs are on display for the fifth lasting impressions at the Sharjah Art Museum until the 6th of December. Well, there's so much more to achieve. This is just the beginning. Um, for five years, we've focused simply on restoring, preserving and building the archive of all of his million photographs. Um, moving forward, I'm hoping that there are many more exhibitions like this one to come, both regionally and internationally. Um, that's the vision, to place his photographs in the right place, in the right museums, in front of the right audience. Um, I'm really looking forward to using internationally his photographs to build bridges and to also show off the international photographs that he took in 35 different countries around the world. There is a, a preconceived notion of what Middle East is, preconceived notion of what women in the Middle East are, a preconceived notion of what the culture is. And I think uh, my father was in a very fortunate position at a time, at a place, where he was able to take a lot of candid photographs of the region, of the ruling family, of the people, ordinary people, ruling, ruling families, ordinary day life, extraordinary events like hoisting of the flag for the nation. So I think there's an amazing richness in the body of the work that can help people build an understanding of our rich culture, our rich heritage. Over the years, photojournalism in the UAE and the region has evolved. The panelists also discussed the changing landscape of photography and photojournalism in the region, as well as the cultural reservations and acceptance. Among them is Christopher Pike, a photojournalist at the National Newspaper, 
who says it has become more challenging with the advancement in technology. He also spoke about other challenges that photojournalists like himself face and the key to taking the perfect shot. Patience, that's the key, I think. It's just about uh, waiting for that uh, uh, precise moment in time, nice light, nice moment, and, and just waiting for it to happen. I think it's really easy to take lots of photos uh, with digital photography and people forget to wait. Uh, I think the hardest thing with any photojournalism anywhere is access. It's just getting getting the ability to shoot photos wherever it may be. Um, the other thing would be just time. A lot, As I said, it takes patience and uh, and sometimes you, don't, you either, whether it be a working photojournalist that has to go to another assignment or you got to go have dinner with your family or on and on and on. So time, access and uh, maybe resources, I guess. And looking to other news now, the track is all set for the 36th edition of the Dubai International Rally taking place this weekend. And it promises to be a heated contest between two drivers who have dominated the circuit over the last decade. At a press conference today, Qatar's Nasser al Ataya, who has won the Dubai International Rally for the last seven years, announced that he is prepared to secure another win in the final round of the FIA Middle East Rally Championship, which will lead to his 10th win of the overall rally championship. Currently at the top of the standings with 75 points, NASA isn't too far off from the Emirati driver Sheikh Khalid al Qasimi at 69 points. Sheikh Khalid is hoping for luck to be on his side this year as crossing the finish line first in his Citroen DS3 in Dubai will certainly seal his second win of the overall FIA Middle East Rally Championship. It all kicks off on Friday morning as the 21 drivers listed for the Dubai Rally will be heading over to the desert areas between Al Daid and Maliha to race a total of 1,008.97 kilometres throughout the two days. The final presentation will be held on Saturday by the Trade Centre. Speaking at the press conference, the two racers and the organiser, Mohammed bin Sulaym, who has 15 wins under his belt, stated that records do matter. But when the helmet is on, it is all about handling the pressure and driving towards a win. Pressure in motorsport, yes, because I call it pressure because pressure comes from calculation. You calculate. Tomorrow I know my car because I tested it. I set the suspension. I set everything in it with my team. I know myself, my physical training, and I know my competitors because I can see his results. So all of that calculation comes, but give you a good pressure. If you don't have the pressure, how can you win? So pressure is there for them. They are not new to the sport. They have been winning and they have been losing. They have been uh, uh, competing with each other. So they, nobody would know them better than themselves. The last time I won the Australia was 2006. I've been uh, out. Last year I was out. Uh, then I stopped for, uh, in 2000. <coughs> I think 12, 13, 11 was out, I was out, and 10, I was out. So basically, all over the years when you are out, but doesn't show that you are, it shows that, you know, the, the thing which really, which really make you think that, okay, I will keep going on, it's just because all the time I've been out, I was reading, leading the rally, or a small second battle, which is still in the, in, in, by winning the rally. And it's just a coincidence or something. Whatever has been written for you in this life is part of it. So, but you have to throw everything from the past and just go on. And yes, I'm going for the win. This is the last event uh, in, the, in the Middle East uh, Championship. And uh, also uh, this time uh, it's April for three driver uh, to, to win uh, the Middle East uh, Rally. Uh, but okay, uh, really we have a lot of good experience and uh, we win last five races, uh, last five year season. Yes, and uh, I am quite happy uh, to be here and we try to do our best for to win. It will be like uh, 10 times Middle East Championship and uh, you know, this is our, our target.